Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another um, AZ700 Designing and Implementing Microsoft Azure Network Solutions Study Guide for the AZ700 Exam. Um, we are, uh, fair to say, we're, 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 we're not deep, but we're almost deep within uh, Module 3 of, of this series, about 20, 22 maybe episodes in. Um, so we've, we've been talking about... Um, I believe it was uh, virtual gateways last um, and t today's episode is going to be about Azure application gateway um, so this is the, the first part of a two-part topic uh, again normal format me doing the theory and Mohammed Sajid following up with a uh, demo so let's get started <clears throat> as I mentioned we are uh, deep into module 3 now so this is the design implementing core application delivery services and today's topic is all about designing and implementing an Azure application gateway. This is part one. So we're going to talk about mapping requirements, the features and capabilities of an Azure application gateway. That's what the AAG stands for. Then we'll talk about identifying appropriate use cases for Azure application gateway. Followed by, uh, we've got two demos today. So we're very, very lucky. It's going to be less of me and more of Mohammed Sajid. So we've got, so is going to do the first demo on creating backend pools. Then another demo on configuring health probes. So you're not going to have me talking for long. Uh, so let's start off by talking about mapping requirements to features and capabilities of uh, the Azure Application Gateway. So the Azure Application Gateway includes lots of different services. The first one being Secure Socket Layer SSL slash TLS Termination. So Application Gateway supports SSL slash TLS Termination uh, at the gateway, after which traffic typically flows um, encrypted, uh, sorry, unencrypted, to the backend servers. This feature allows web servers to, uh, to, to be unburdened essentially from, from costly encryption and decryption overhead. Uh, but sometimes unencrypt, unencrypted communication to the servers isn't an acceptable option, most times really. This can be because of you know, security requirements, uh, compliance requirements, or, or the application may only, you know, might only accept secure connection. For these applications, application gateway supports the end-to-end -end SSL slash TLS encryption. We have another feature for auto-scaling. So Application Gateway, the, the standard uh, V2 supports auto-scaling can scale up or down based on the sort of changing traffic load patterns. Uh, auto-scaling also removes the requirement to, to choose a deployment size or, or instance count during provisioning. We then have a feature for zone redundancy. So Again, uh, standard uh, V2 sort of application gateway can span multiple availability zones. And this offers uh, obviously better fault resilience and removing that need to provision separate application gateways in, in, in every zone. We then have another feature called static VIP. So again, the application gateway standard uh, V2 SKU, this supports static VIP um, exclusively. And this ensures that the, the VIP associated with Application Gateway doesn't change even over the lifetime of the Application Gateway. Uh, and finally, the, the sort of feature I want to touch on, uh, another feature was Web Application Firewall. So, or, or better known as a WAF. So the Web Application Firewall is a service that provides centralized protection to your web applications uh, from common exploits and, and sort of vulnerabilities. So just sticking with this topic of mapping those requirements to, to capabilities and features, um, I want to talk about ingress control for AKS. This is another feature and capability. So Application Gateway uh, Ingress Control, or AGIC uh, for short, allows you to use Application Gateway as, as an ingress for um, AKS or Azure Kubernetes services. The ingress controller runs as a, as a pod within the AKS cluster. Uh, and it consumes that sort of Kubernetes ingress resources and converts them to an application gateway configuration. That then allows uh, the gateway to, to load balance traffic to the Kubernetes pods. Uh, the ingress controller it only supports application gateway standard v2 and WAF v2 SKU, so make sure you remember that. Next feature I want to touch on is the URL based routing. So URL Path-based routing allows you to, to route traffic to, to sort of back-end server pools based on URL paths 
uh, of the request. One of the scenarios is to, is to sort of route requests for, for different content types to different pools. We have a feature called uh, multi-site hosting. So this is, you know, with application gateway, you can configure routing based on, on host names or, or domain names for more than one web application or the same application gateway, on the same application gateway. It allows you to, to configure sort of a more efficient topology for your deployments by adding up to, well, hundreds really of websites to one application gateway. And each website can be directed to its own backend pool. Uh, another, another capability is session affinity. So cookie-based session affinity, uh, this, this feature is useful when you want to keep user sessions on the same server. And by using that gateway managed cookie, the application gateway can direct subsequent traffic from a user session to the same server for, for processing. And, and this is important in, in sort of cases where session state is saved locally on the server for, for those user sessions. Finally, uh, another feature capability okay, connection draining. So the connection draining helps you uh, achieve graceful removal of backend pool members during sort of planned maintenance and, and updates. Uh, this setting is, is enabled via the backend HTTP setting and can be applied to all members of that backend pool during rule creation. Once it's enabled, application gateway uh, application gateway ensures all deregistering instances of the backend pool don't receive any sort of new requests while allowing existing requests to complete within the, the required sort of time limit. So this applies to both backend instances that are explicitly removed from the, from the backend pool by user configuration change and backend instances that are reported as unhealthy um, by the health probes. So let's move on now to identifying some appropriate use cases for application as your application gateway. So as your application gateway provides HTTP-based load balancing that enables it creating rules uh, in creating rules for the traffic-based HTTP. You could also uh, use it for you know application-level routing. So th this allows you to deliver application-level routing and load balancing that enables uh, you to create reliable and scalable websites and web applications. So you know there's another use case there that you can use it for. Uh, you can deliver and manage load balancing solutions for websites, as I mentioned, web applications, or even any sort of internet-based service. Can uh, can deliver cookie-based session affinity service as well for for those scenarios and use cases where you need that. And finally, in those more secure environments, you can enable SSL offloading service that takes the encryption de-encryption burden out of that primary website or web server. So, a bit of a shorter episode from myself. Um, I'm going to now hand over to my good friend Mohammed Sajid to do both the demos. Over to you, Saj. Thank you, Shabazz. So in this demo, we're going to take a look at creating a backend pool in an app gateway. So I've already deployed the app gateway because it takes a little while to deploy. So if you navigate to uh, load balancers and application gateway, if you're not creating one, you can step through the wizard will help you create one, select create. You can see you actually define the backend pool as part of the application gateway setup process. If you already deployed one, if you navigate to the one that you deployed, application gateway, select the application gateway you've deployed, and under settings, you've got backend pools. And as you can see, I have a couple of ones configured here. Uh, if you look at the one that's already deployed, backend pool 01, essentially you give it a name, add backend pool without targets. Uh, default is no, so you can actually deploy it without a target. And you have the option to deploy as an IP address or FQDN, virtual machine, virtual machine scale cell app services. So it's looking at more than just uh, VMs, virtual machines, virtual machine scale cells, IP addresses, domain names, or an app service. Uh, app, app gateway works at the layer seven, so it's HTTP, HTTPS. So if you look here, I've deployed it to virtual machine, my backend, so you can have another machine in here, so you can go virtual machine and select another available virtual machine or seven as an example. If you had more, you can select more. Uh, and then essentially that clicks save and you've got a new rule. So if you look, if you step out of this, look at actually creating a new backend. So you come to settings, go to backend pools, you select add, give it a name, backend pool without targets, yes or no. And then you have the option of IP address FQDN, 
virtual machine, virtual machine scale says to app services. Once you don't select that, and save. And that's how you create a backend proof for an application gateway. Um, in this quick demo, we're going to take a look at creating a custom health probe. So we're doing that for our application gateway. So navigate to load balancers, navigation to application gateway, and this is the demo application gateway that we've deployed. Under settings, navigate to health probes and set, click add. And here you have an interface you've probably seen a few times now. So you give it a name, health probe or one as an example, protocol HTTP port 80 or HTTPS 443, and the host, the host could be a DNS name, a URL path, a backend IP address of your backend servers, internal IP address. So we'll take a look at the one already configured and pick the host name from the backend setting. The default is no, so for this demo, we'll leave it as no. Pick a port from backend settings, and we'll leave the default as yes, and path. So uh, path starts with forward slash, and we can just leave it as that for now, until every 30 seconds. Timeout is default in 30 seconds. You can change this to 60, you can change it to five seconds, only have the thresholds. How much time we will try before it fails, before it deems the backend to be unhealthy. The default is three, you can lower that or, or raise that. Use probe matching conditions. So if you look at the information, by default, an HTTPS response with a status code of 200 and 399, or between 200 and 399 is considered healthy. You could create custom conditions if you needed to and define your back end, back end settings. So, if, and then you have the ability to test this before you actually deploy it. So if you look at the one that we already configured, so again, name, protocol, port 80, back end settings, and the host the IP address. So we have in our back end, two demo servers, demo 01, demo 02. And for the probe we've created, we've created, we're targeting just one of the servers as a, in this particular example with an IP address of 10.1.0.5. So if you look at how we've configured this, essentially give it a name, unique name, protocol 80443, host, and we're targeting the backend host yet. Uh, we're not using the DNS name. We don't have DNS configured at this moment in time. We left the default for pick host name from backend, pick port from backend settings, we, um, default path, and the others we have left. So again, you could change these. You could change this to 20 seconds if you want to. If you look at the information, it says port interval in seconds. The value is the time interval between two consecutive probes. So how long it waits before it tries again? And timeout in seconds. A probe timeout in seconds. If a valid response is not received within the timeout period, the probe is marked as failed. 30 seconds again. If you need to change this, you can change this to something that works for you. One healthy threshold is three. And the backend settings that we've configured here. And test. Discard the changes. If you need to configure backend settings, if you haven't done that as part of your setup, so you can come to backend settings here and configure the backend settings. If you look at the ones that we already configured, again, give it a name, protocol, uh, cookie based affinity, so session affinity, so we've left that as default. Connection draining. Connection draining is if you want to bring down a server for maintenance or for patching and you want to gracefully disconnect the users, enable that instead of just shooting the server down. Uh, host name and again see custom probe so we've created that backend help probe or one which is what this uh, backend settings are connected to uh, use custom probe yes in our case um, and that's it so uh, just a quick recap navigate to your application gateway select the application gateway that you want under settings navigate to help probes define your help probe you need a backend settings configured as part of this because you need to select it here uh, name, protocol, host, host can be URL path, a DS, DNS name, it can be an IP address, backend internal IP address, uh, configure the, the settings as you need them, define your path, you can have a custom, you know, a path, tagging a particular path, or just for such in the case that we've configured, we just configured uh, the path because it starts with that, test it, if it's healthy, configure it, uh, uh, deploy it. Thank you for watching, back to you Shabbats. Thanks, Saj. Another couple of couple of demos there. Really spot you for choice there. We've, um, you know, said it was probably better. Again, one of those episodes it's probably better to, to show you rather than talk about it. So we had we had two episodes on creating the backend pool there. We had configuring um, 
health probes as well. So thank you, Mary Sajid, for that. Um, so this is part one um, of this topic. Part two, again, we're going to cover some more theory. Uh, and I think the second or the, the demo in that episode is going to be around configuring routine rules. So um, that should be something to look forward to there. So, yeah, thank you for watching again. Uh, please keep on liking. Please keep on com com commenting and, and giving us your feedback. Uh, and of course, keep on subscribing. If you're not subscribed already, why? You're watching all the videos, just hit that subscribe button and get notified when new videos come up. I'm releasing quite a few at the moment on various topics. Uh, and again, my, my, my channel is, is growing quite quickly. The last the last month or so has grown quite quickly. So again, I want to thank everybody for their support. But uh, up until next time, goodbye.